Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allahumma salli ala seyyidina Muhammed ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in. La havle ve la kuvvete illa billahi l'alil adim. Rabbena atina fid dunya haseneten ve fil ahireti haseneten ve kina azab nar The author is now going to move on to the next section which is Babu Salat al-Janazati in which he's going to talk about the funeral prayer uh, and how it's performed and the specific du'as that can be mentioned during the Salatul Janaza. And so the author starts off by saying, Was Salatul Janazati fardun al kifayati. The first thing that he mentions is the ruling of the funeral prayer. And he says, Fardun al kifaya, meaning it's fard kifaya, meaning that it's a communal obligation for the Salatul Janaza to be carried out on the person, on the deceased person. So as long as at least one person prays the Salat al Janazah, then the obligation is removed from the rest of the uh, from the rest of the people. So that's what they mean by far, uh, That's what he means when he says Yani was Salat al Janazati fardun al kifayati. And then he goes on to mention the arkan, the things that are necessary in order for the uh, salat al janaza to be sound so he says arkanuha arba'atun he says the arkan are four aniya two the first one is the niya and what we mean by niya is to uh, the niya that one is praying for the deceased so when a person is praying salat al janaza they should have the niya and uh, the niya should be specific because the Salat al Janazah differs from, differs from the, uh, any other prayer because regular prayers have sujood and ruku'a, whereas the Salat al Janazah doesn't have sujood and it doesn't have ruku'a, as we'll see later on. And then he mentions with arba'u takbiratin and four takbirat. So in the Salat al Janazah prayer, we're not going to have any ruku'a and sujood. In fact, the reason why we have four takbirat is. Uh, According to the uh, some of the ulama, they say that the reason why we have four takbirat is because every takbir here is going to be uh, a replacement for the raka for the for the raka. So we don't have rakas because the whole prayer is standing. So the four takbirat here are all obligatory, not like the normal prayer where it's sunnah. The in the janaza prayer, the every uh, f all four of these takbirat are obligatory. So the four takbirat meaning the takbiratul ihram and the other three that follow it doesn't mean the takbiratul ihram and then another four so he says arba'atun anniyatu arba'u takbiratin wa du'a'u baynahunna and making du'a for the deceased between every takbir so between every takbir you're going to make a du'a for the deceased then the fourth one that he mentions is was salam, meaning the taslim. Making taslim is also the fourth obligation. So he mentioned that the obligation the arba, but other books mention that the arkan are khamsa, adding qiyam, meaning that standing for the salat al janaza is oblig obligatory unless a person uh, doesn't have the ability to stand. So as he says for here. Uh, make a note that the fifth one is al qiyam, standing for the Salat al Janazah, is also a rukun for anybody who has the ability to stand. So, we did mention the dua and that the dua is obligatory. And as we know, everybody, we mentioned what the takbirat is, what's obligatory, that a person has to have the intention of Salat al Janazah. And we mentioned the arba'u takbiratin, and we mentioned the salam. All those are clear. But when we mentioned the dua, then what is what kind of du'a and how much of a du'a is considered sufficient in order for me to get the uh, to fulfill the obligation of making du'a? And that's why the author says, "Wajdu bima tayassara." A person should make du'a uh, bima tayassara in, in, in what is easy for him. And what does it mean that uh, what is easy for him? Any type of du'a that a person were to say uh, that would be considered uh, a dua for the deceased. For example, Allahumma akhfir lahu warhamhu. 
you know, Allah forgive him and have mercy on him, that would be sufficient. So that's what he means by يَدْعُوا بِمَا تَيَسَّرَ So a person could use that dua uh, be, for every, between every takbir and that would be sufficient. But then he goes on and says وَاسْتَحْسَنَ Ibn Abi Zayd in Firisalatihi. But then he said that Ibn Abi Zayd uh, preferred a specific dua, which is gener- which is the dua narrated from Abi, uh, Abu Huraira. And he's going to mention it at length. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read the dua and a handout will be presented so that those who don't know Arabic language can follow the translation and the transliteration. So through this long passage, I'll just read the Arabic, I'll just read the du'a in Arabic without the translation because the handout in itself will have the transliteration and the translation of the meaning of the Arabic. So he says that Ibn Abi Zayd, Firi Salati, he's an yakula, that you should say, Alhamdulillah, Alladhi Amata wa Ahya, wa Alhamdulillah, Alladhi Yuhyi al Mauta. لَهُ الْعَذَمَةُ وَالْكِبْرِيَاءُ وَالْمُلْكُ وَالْقُدْرَةُ وَالثَّنَاءُ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت ورحمت وباركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم إنه عبدك وابن عبدك وابن أمتك أنت خلقته ورزقته وأنت أمته وأنت تحييه وأنت أعلم بسره وعلانيته جئناك شفعاء له فشفعنا فيه اللهم إن نستجير بحبل جوارك له إنك ذو وفاء وذمة اللهم قيه من فتنة القبر ومن عذاب الجهنم اللهم اغفر له وارحمه واعف عنه وعافيه وأكرم نزله ووسع مدخله واغسله بماء وثلج وبرد ونقيه من الذنوب والخطايا كما ينقى الثوب الأبيض من الدنس وأبدله دارا خيرا من داره وأهلا خيرا من أهله وزوجا خيرا من زوجه اللهم إن كان محسنا فزد في إحسانه وإن كان مسيئا فتجاوز عن سيئاته اللهم إنه قد نزل بك وأنت خير منزول به فقير إلى رحمتك وأنت غني عن أذابه اللهم ثبت عند المسألة منطقه ولا تبتليه ولا تبتليه في قبره بلا بما لا طاقة بما لا طاقة له به وألحقه بنية محمد صلى الله عليه أصحب نبيه محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم لا تحرمنا أجره ولا تفتنا بعده. So then the author goes on to say تقول ذلك بإثر كل تكبيرة and a person should say that meaning say the dua that we mentioned after every takbir. and remember that he said that this is obviously what is considered uh, what is considered uh, مستحب. Then he says, وَتُقُولُ بَعْدَ الرَّابِعَةِ And a person should say after the uh, after the fourth takbir. So basically what he mentioned is, uh, what he's saying is that this dua that we just read should be said after the first takbir, the second takbir, and the third takbir. So now he's going to say what is يعني, mustahab to be said after the fourth takbir. And he says, اللَّهُمَّ اغْفِرْ لِحَيِّنَا وَمَيِّتِنَا وَحَادِرِنَا وَغَائِبِنَا وَصَغِيرِنَا وَكَبِيرِنَا والذكرنا وأنثانا إنك تعلم متقلبنا ومثوانا واغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولمن سبقنا بالإيمان مغفرة عزما وللمسلمين وللمسلمين والمسلمات وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم من أحييته منا ف فأحييه على الإيمان و 
ومن توفيت ومن توفيته فتوفه على الإسلام وسعدنا بلقائك وطيبنا للموت وطيبه لنا وجعل فيه راحتنا ومسرتنا ثم then after is going to say ثم تسلم then a person after saying this dua should make the final taslim. So what he mentioned before was, uh, for those who know Arabic, was what a person says in terms of uh, when that person is a male. And so the author goes on and says, in كَانَتِ salatu عَلَى مْرَأَةٍ If it was on a woman, kulta, then you say, Allahumma innaha amatuka. Thumma, and uh, that you would say, innaha amatuka, that she is your slave. You wouldn't say that he is your slave. Here you would use the feminine. So in English, in terms of English language, a person wouldn't distinguish between feminine and, and masculine, but in Arabic language, uh, there is a difference. And then he says, ثم تتمادى بذكرها على تأنيث. And then you uh, you should go on to mention her uh, mention uh, any time the deceased comes up in the in the dua that you should mention her be تأنيث يعني in the in the feminine form. Except the fact that you don't say. غير أنك لا تقول that you don't say وأبدلها زوجا خيرا من زوجها that you don't say uh, give her a husband better than her husband in this world and he mentions the أنها قد تكون زوجا في الجنة لزوجها في الدنيا because as in as the hadith mentions uh, here the author says because in paradise the husband of the the husband of the of the deceased woman in paradise will be the same husband in this world. So that's why it says the Annaha Katokuna Zaujan fil Jenna that her that that it will be her husband in Jenna Li Zojiha Fidunya. The same one that was in the dunya will be the same one that is her husband in, in the hereafter. And then he says when Nisa ul when Nisa ul Jannati Azwajihinna and because the women of paradise are limited to their husbands la yabagina bihim badalan and they will not desire to have more than that and then he's going to mention also what if you were to come to a janazah and you didn't know that whether it was a male or a female what should you say that's why it says what in adrakta janazatan if you came to a janazah walam ta'lam and you didn't know whether or not the being was a uh, was a male or a female. Kulta, you should say, Allahumma innaha nasamatuka. That you should say, innaha, verily, it is nasamatuka. Nasamatuka generally means your soul or the thing in which you created. So what you're actually doing here is you're not. You're, you're making dua for the being or the deceased. You're not saying I'm making dua for her or I'm making dua for him. Because when you use the word nesama, it includes both either male or female. So that's why it says you should start by saying innaha nesamatuka. Whereas if you were saying a female, you would say innaha amatuka. She is your slave because amatuka is the female. But if you say, if it was a male, then you'd say innaha uh, or you would say, yeah, you would say, Innahu Abduka, he's your slave. And so he goes on to say, Thumma yatamada bidhikriha ala ta'neeth. Then, in terms of when you don't know it's a male or a female, then continue using the ta'neeth, the feminine form, because the word nasama is a feminine word. Not that it's a feminine thing in itself, it's a feminine word. So you by using ha, you can you can you either uh, you're intending that actual being whether it's a male or it's a female and he clarifies that by saying the n uh, because the word nesama tashmalu dhakara wal untha it includes both male and female so it's not specific to a gender then he says what in kanati salatu ala tiflin قُلْتُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنَ النِّيَّةِ وَالتَّقْبِيرَاتِ وَالدُّعَاءِ غَيْرَ أَنْهُ يُسْتَحَبُّ أَنْ تُقُولَ بَعْدَ الثَّنَاءِ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَالصَّلَاةِ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمْ 
Then he's going to say here, in terms of if you're praying on a child, meaning a, somebody before the age of uh, uh, puberty, Balur, he says that, so if you're praying on a child, Kulta ma min niyati, then you should, uh, the prayer is not going to differ. The niya is going to be the same. What takbirat and the takbirs are going to be the same. What dua is going to be the, is going to be the same. Except ennuhu yustahabu an tukula. Except that uh, it is better to say after you say بعد الثناء إلى الله والصلاة على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم after the salawat on the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and the and the uh, praising of Allah then you should say this dua. What he's referring to, if we go back to the first dua, we'll notice that we started the uh, after the first takbir we started the dua with a with a praise to Allah and was salatu was salam and then we started the dua for the deceased. So here he's saying that everything is the same, but after you finish the salawat of the du'a, the salawat on the Prophet ﷺ and the hamd for Allah, the praise of the praising of Allah, then the child, the, the du'a for the child is different from the du'a for the adult. So what he's going to mention here is the du'a that is that should be said for the child in place of the du'a that is said for the adult. It says, "Allahumma innahu abduka wa abnu abdika." Anta khalaqtahu wa razaqtahu wa anta amattahu wa anta tuhyihi Allahumma j'alhu li walidayhi salafan wa dhukhran wa faratan wa ajran wa thaqil bihi mawazinahuma wa a'adhim bihi ujurahuma wa la tahrimna wa iyahuma ajrahu wa la taftinna wa iyahuma بعده اللهم الحق بصالح السلف المؤمنين في كفالة إبراهيم وابدله دارا خيرا من داره وأهلا خيرا من أهله وعافيه من فتنة القبر ومن عذاب جهنم. Then he says, then the author says after you say this du'a تقول ذلك بإثر كل تكبرات. You should say this after every takbir, meaning the first, the second, and the third. Walakin, watukulu ba'dur rabi'ati. But what you should say after the fourth one, the fourth takbir is Allahumma ghfir li aslafina wa afratina wa li man sabaqana bil imani. Allahumma man ahyaytahu minna fa ahyihi ala al imani. Wa man tawafaytahu minna fa tawafahu ala al islami. Wa ghfir li al muslimin wa al muslimati. والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات. Then he says ثم تسلم. Then the person should make the tasnim and then he says والله أعلم as the end of the brief chapter on uh, صلاة الجنازة. Now a few points here that should be mentioned. According to the Malikiyah, we do not have uh, سورة الفاتحة read in صلاة الجنازة, which uh, is contrary to the Shafis. The Shafis read uh, the Shafis re it's obligatory for them to read Al-Fatiha uh, during the first raka of the uh, I'm not sure if it's just the first raka it's all the rakas but at least in the first raka they have to read Surah Al-Fatiha uh, also it should be known that this dua has to be said in Arabic it cannot be said in English uh, in our school it's recommended that it's said Quietly, in, in fact, all du'a should be said uh, should be said quietly. So, as we mentioned before, if a person can't memorize all of this, or a person doesn't know Arabic language, it's enough for them to say, "Allahumma aghfir, uh, aghfir lahu warhamhu." Yani, oh Allah, forgive me. I mean, uh, forgive him and have mercy on him. Also, the the first takbirs, you notice that the du'a that we say after the first and the second and the third takbir are specific to the deceased only. Meaning that we only mention the, the, the deceased. In the last takbir, you will notice that we're making du'a for the deceased and the ummah in general. So the the deceased of the... Uh, so the, uh, the janazah... The first three takbirs is going to be for the du first. We're going to start by making praise on Allah, uh, Alhamdulillah. Then we're going to make salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then we're going to start the, the takbir for the deceased. That is, 
how we do it from the first, the second, and the third. In the last one, we start with the takbir on the deceased. I mean, we start with the uh, praise of Allah and uh, pray, uh, the salawat of the Prophet Then the then uh, we're going to make du'a for the for the for the ummah, including the deceased, all together. And then we also mentioned that there's a specific du'a for the children and there's a specific du'a for the adults. And when we're making du'a for the adults. We're going to, if it's a male, we're going to use the feminine, the fem, the, the the feminine gender. I mean, if for the male, we're going to use a masculine gender. If we're dealing with the female, we're going to do a feminine gender. If we're going to, if we don't know whether it's a male or it's a female, we're going to see, we're going to use the word nesama, which just indicates a soul, our 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 creation. So the word itself is a feminine, so we're going to use the feminine. But we're whatever our nia is that what if it's for if it's if it's for if it's for a male, then we're going to intend the male. If it's for a female, then we're going to intend the female. And when we make the niya, we just have to have the niya that we're making the dua for, I mean, that we're praying Salat al Janazah for the deceased. And we don't have to have included in the niya whether we're making it for a boy or whether we're making it for a girl or whether we're making it for a child. And so this is the general uh, things that apply to the. Salat al Janazah, and since it's a very basic book, he keeps it basic. In more advanced books, you have a lot more things to consider in terms of you know burying lots of people in one in one uh, you know in one in one coffin or in one grave hole, or the question of you know washing the body when they're burned. You have all kinds of different masal, or what do we do if we bury? Them? We don't know whether the person's actually a Muslim or a non-Muslim. And what's the ruling of washing the body and wrapping the body and how should it be done? There's still lots of more ahkam, but the point of this text is to cover what uh, is sufficient for a person to know how to attain, how to go to the masjid and pray the Salat al-Janazah or wherever the Salat al-Janazah is taking place. So, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. That is the end of the lesson. And as I mentioned, the transliteration and the translation of the du'as that were mentioned will, are provided uh, in a document accompanying this audio. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.